All right. So, yeah. So what I was saying though is I started my show this January will be three years ago. And this mm-hmm. year, is it this year? I'll say last March was when I started doing videos more and more so because before I would do I'd record like via Skype or via Zoom, but only put the audio portion out. I wouldn't put the video portion out. But mm-hmm. now I'm starting to do well, like I said, back, like last March, I started to do both. And once I started to do both, I was like, OK, I love this video thing. It's so freaking fun because it just makes it's cool to like go back and watch it. And it went from that to watching other friends do live streams like a good friend of mine. Her name is Joe. Any last words podcast, horror podcast, which you would enjoy definitely. But um, mm-hmm. I've seen like her live streams a lot, and I'm just like, this looks so fun. And I've been on a couple with her, and I'm like, this is this is, seems so fun. It looks so fun to just be live and interactive with people. And I just, I was like, screw it, <laughs> like no live about maybe a month ago now, maybe more or less about a month. Let's say two months tops. I started doing the live thing with this Horror Research 30 show, and I also have another show with three friends called uh, Popcorn and Pints, which it's very similar to this show. The only difference is this, you know, it's a horror show. The other show is non-horror. We, you know, we no. review movies. So it's basically the same thing. We review movies, non-horror. We'll eventually be getting into interviews. It's just, you know, it'll take its time. But getting back to that, the live stuff, it's just so fun which eventually i'm gonna be like 100 percent live on both show or well, on this show i'll say as far as like interviews and stuff i just want to give it a look just because it makes it easier to which for those of you when you do listen to this episode in the future it makes it easier if you're doing like a video audio if you're doing a video podcast especially so you don't have to do a lot of you don't have to do a lot of editing if you just do it live and have it go have it go share out to live to YouTube and all this stuff. Like I only share it out to Facebook and stuff like that right now, but next it'll be YouTube and all that. That way I don't have to worry about editing, downloading the episode or anything. And as far as for my audio DSPs, I can just download the audio from this right here. Like say if we were live and going live on YouTube, just download the audio and upload that on the audio thing, either that same night or the next night or the next day, for example. And then boom, you got everything and it saves time. It saves a lot of time. Cause what I was, and I'll let the cat out of the bag because what I'm going to start doing is w- once I start doing it that way, 100 percent, I'll have like my intro set up because with the, with reshoot, you can have like an intro set. Boom, hit the intro. And then towards the end of the episode, for any episode, have it have a outro set. Boom, hit the outro. As soon as the outro goes off, just end the stream and boom, that goes all up on YouTube. And once I share it visually, download mm. the audio, put it up everywhere I want to put it. And I say it'll save me so much freaking time because I like so when this pandemic started last year, last March, I um, it was March seventeenth, the last day I worked in the office. Been working home since uh, July, I want to say, but I was getting paid in between to do you know, to do nothing. So I was like, you know what, I hit up with him. <clears throat> I hit up my co-host. Well, he's a, he's a co-host now, but he's a good friend of mine, James, which we're co-workers now. You know, I was like, hey man, what are you doing today? Nothing. You want to record? Yeah, and we were we just no lie between me and him. This is just between me and him, not even like me recording with others. We probably did about 40 or 50 episodes between March and June, July, just recording. Damn, Some days we record like two episodes a day. Damn, we're recording three to five times a week, sometimes more, just because there was nothing else, like literally there's nothing to do. It's like, let's just watch movies and record. Let's watch movies and record. And we had so much fun doing it. And then I'm just like, because, and the, well, real quick, the reason why I was doing it like that. And people have heard the story before, but they're going to hear it again. But the reason I was doing it like that is that I did not know, which like the rest of us did not know when we were going back to work. So it's like, I don't want to, I'd rather have a shit ton of content backlog like I am, backlog at the ass like I am, than to be too cautious to where it's like, okay, I'm only going to record once or twice a week or whatever the case may be, because I don't know when we're going back to work. But what I wish I could have done, which I, what I wish I would have done, not could have, what I wish I would have done is during those times when I was doing all that was I had backlog. I was already backlogged then, but not as bad as I am now. But I wish I would have just been editing episodes as as I'm recording. Like, say, say we recorded on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm just spending the day at re- at editing. But I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Like, I'd record, record damn near as much. Like, I'd re- literally try to record damn near every single day. If I was with James, it would be with just, others that were just fans of horror just to again just to get that content there so it's like okay now that the content is here i can drop you know i mean i can drop it whenever but it's 
harder to gather all this content. I'm like, right now, a lot of people around the whole world, not just like upstate New York where I'm at, but a lot of people around the whole world are stuck inside. So it's like, why not try to reach out to people that are horror fans and other horror groups and just talk about some horror movies, talk about their horror art and all that other stuff. And hey, here I am now. And now I'm thinking like, okay, do everything live so that you won't have to worry about this whole backlog stuff. So that's why I'm starting probably not this, obviously not this week, but probably next week with my Tuesday and Thursday episodes of Horror Research 30. If, as long as I can think... As long as I can, because I want to redo my intro, my intro, not my outro, but just my intro. As long as I get that taken care of and all that good stuff, it'll be like 100% live. And then I'll just upload the audio once again. Here's another funny thing, right? So actually, that wouldn't even matter. So my audio is further behind than my video because when I, when I would edit my videos, it's all in one program. I can just you know, edit the video, put it out as the MP4, and then that same thing, just put it out as an MP3. So I wouldn't have mm-hmm. to do, you know, I wouldn't have to do, do that multiple times. So yeah, I have to go back and do that. So what I was, because I, once I started doing video, I was more focused on uploading the videos and not the audio. So I'm like maybe six episodes behind on the audio as far as from the video. And then from the video, it's, 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 it's going to get better though, people, I promise. <laughs> it's just, I mean, at the very least, I can say, I am showing that I have that passion, but it's a lot of work too, though. It is a lot of work as far as, especially now that I'm back to my nine to five, so to speak, working from home. Yes. But you have to put time into that. I have to put time into recording and time into editing, of course, family time. So it's just like, if I can pull just one of those things back, like the editing time, boom, that gives me more time to do this, 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 and this, because as you know, Editing takes damn there's much time, if not more time, it does to record an episode. And it's not as fun or funny. I do it, I do enjoy editing though. Don't get me wrong. I do love it, but it's not as fun as actually something like this, like an interview or a review or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, now there's different levels, I guess. You know, even with going from audio to video, you know, whether or not you want to use video, it's a decision, yeah. but that's still sort of within the same show. But when you go live, it's like a different show. It's completely oh, yeah. different. It's uh, it's like you have to keep almost separate shows. You can't do the same show, you know, both live and not live. It's like so different. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's addicting though, man. Like going live, it's because again, like right now, I don't have a ton of viewers. I'll have ten max at a time here and there. Sometimes more, sometimes less, which is fine. It takes time to grow. I'm, I love the growth part. I love the patience. I love the growth part of it. So that doesn't yeah. bother me at all. But going live, no matter if you have one viewer or 20 viewers or whatever I'll say, or 100 viewers, whatever the case may be, it's just that that extra, like, excitement, so to speak. Like, that extra, like, oh, shit, I'm live now. People can actually, they don't have to wait to hear the episode. If they're free, they can listen to it. They can watch it. They can chime in, which is another thing I love is how they can chime in with their comments and all that stuff. And that just brings it up. That brings it even further. And another reason why I like going live, just being a fan of horror, being a fan of podcasts, is when people comment and you put, like, you read their comment out loud or pull their comment up on the screen. It makes them feel like they're a part of something, which they are. And as a fan of this yeah. stuff, when you are like when I'm watching other people's shows, like again, with any last words, she does that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and other people who go live, you throw your comments in there for whatever reason, for whatever you say. Some comments will be brought. Most of the comments will be read. A lot of the comments will be brought up on the screen so you can see it, especially if it's something really funny. And I just feel it's like cool because you feel a part of that episode or a part of that. You know what I mean? That whole thing versus which is not a bad thing but when you go to when you go to watch it after it's a pre-recorded episode you drop your comments on YouTube and all that which people do respond I will respond if you drop them but it, it's you don't get you don't get that same feel on either end of it versus live which I do love both do not get me wrong cuz I love and enjoy both as a podcaster and as a viewer but it's just that live interaction it's the same thing with like going to a con and meeting like Kane Hodder and getting to see them live or being on a panel and getting to talk to these people live. It's different than like, you know what I mean? It's, well, it's just a whole another atmosphere. It's like a whole new world. It's because it's instant. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's right there and it's happening as it's happening 
Oops. Um, and um, yeah, you know, you, you're talking to two people and people are talking to you, even though you don't quite hear them. You just see their questions or comments or, exactly. or whatever, but you respond to them directly and straight away. And yeah, not in chat where they don't even know if it was you who answered or not. Oh, that you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're, you're, no, but no, what I mean, they'll know it to me because it's, it's the live feed, but you're, you're absolutely right with that. Like, it's, it's just, it's boom, it's right there in your face. It's like, hey, oh shit, these guys are live. What are they talking about? Oh, this is cool. This is funny. Let's, you know, let's, let's enjoy it. Not only that, it's like if, if you're the, the person at home, the, in the audience, you know, it's like they're talking about me live. You know, yeah. That's my question. That's my comment. Yeah. And they pulled it up on the screen. Like, holy shit, they pulled it up and they pulled it up on the screen. And another cool thing about it, like uh, other things I'll do here and there is like, if, especially with somebody who's uh, has like a small business owner, that small business owner horror or not, if it's horror, I'll pull it up on the screen, which I will pull up your link on the screen in a minute, but I'll pull it up on the screen. So people are like, Hey, listen, go check this person's stuff out, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. And then put it back. And people really do appreciate that because I mean, it helps. <laughs> it helps. And it's just, I mean, you're, you're, I look at it like, I'm not gonna sit here and I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do this every single episode. I'll do it here and there, but I look at it like you're taking your time to come listen to me and some friends bullshit about some movie. The least I can do is share your business page for a couple seconds or a minute or whatever, and it helps. And it, it what it, it also will slowly but surely I know that'll bring others in. Yeah, a, a sense of uh, community. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's what it's about. Exactly. I mean, that's what, you know, most of uh, what I do on my website, that's really what it's about. It's um, uh, it's creating that. Oh. Just you mentioned your website. I was like, this is the perfect segue. Let me bring it this up. Guy, this guy looks familiar. Yeah. You know him? What is that? My bio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just figured just so people can see, like, who you are and, like, what you do. Because you do a lot of awesome things. Just from from what I've seen you do on the my indie productions via facebook and then just the website in general you really put a light on a lot of independent artists which i think is a beautiful amazing awesome thing and um, well that's kind of uh the other side of the website and, and it's exactly what it's about it's an independent um, artist community um, one side of it is really the my indie productions the production company Mm -hmm. um, so where, you know, I promote um, my indie content, which is basically what uh, what my indie productions, um, you know, produce. Yeah, yeah. So it's my films or, or something like that, um, or films I'm involved with, uh, involved in. Um, and um, the other side of it is really the um, artist community where I promote other indie artists. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it been uh, that's been. My, my full-time job for the last few years. That's awesome, though. So it, 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 it is it is if it would pay. <laughs> ah, gotcha. <laughs> That's the difference. But yeah, no, but it's uh, it's been very rewarding in other ways. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's been great. Yeah. Which I think I'm is not. awesome. And I mean, if you guys can, you know, let me pull this up. I'm mm. actually an affiliate of this. You, you have been. I think you, you almost forgot about that. But that's what, from a few years back. Yes, which I gotta, I gotta start bringing this up, Mario. Let people know about this. I did forget just because. Well, me and you, I know we talked briefly here and there, but we haven't had a little chance like this to nah, finally put down. Yeah. And people, listen, check out this indie store. Once it loads up, get yourself mm. a shirt. Yeah, that's pretty new, but yeah, that's a, a good way to support us. Um, we have uh, the, in, the my indie store. Basically, mindystore.com, um, and we also ha we also have a, a buy me a coffee account where people sometimes you know would uh, uh, show some appreciation for what we do and just basically buy us a, a coffee or a few, and uh, yeah, that helps keep um, keep the w the website going because uh, the website has grown a lot since we started, and it's like costing more and more and more, and that's just mm -hmm. basically coming out of my pocket. Um, at some stage, I'm going to have to try to. Uh, bring it down a little bit roll it back <laughs> Understand. You know, especially okay. now with uh, with covid it's been a it's been a tough year definitely now but, you know, it's it's still a lot of fun though it, I, i'm sure I, i'm sure it is because like 
with what with what I do, yes, I do movie reviews and all that stuff and all kinds of stuff with that. But I also like to have people on like yourself to kind of help promote what you guys do. Yeah, and we I, also um, we also do reviews on the website. Um, at the moment, it's just written reviews. We used to do um, we used to have a show, the Mindy Review Vlog, that was hosted by Asaf Angel. That was um, we did two seasons, about seventy two episodes. That mm -hmm. I still I still promote it. Uh, you know, every chance I get. That was a lot of fun. Um, we just reviewed um, indie filmmaker, you know, indie films only, which I think is awesome. Yeah, that's. We're, I think that's really, really yeah. cool because they, as they deserve that light, they deserve that. Shine. I do both, but mm -hmm. they do deserve that shine of like something that's geared towards just. Which I'm sure, but that's geared towards just indie indie individuals because again, it's they deserve it. They do a lot of awesome awesome work, and again. Yeah, 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 no, I would say most of them deserve it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's um, it's 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 just they. I think the the fact that they need it is is why I started it all. You know, because being an independent artist myself, I sort of came to realize very quickly how important it is to find exposure to to you know to get the films out there to to get people talking about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, you know what, now that I have this platform, I can actually help other artists get the same, you know, all that exposure. And, and we, uh, along the way, found new ways of doing that for other people. So, you know, it was the, the main review vlog came up and, and writing reviews and uh, connecting people, um, trying to get uh, people distribution, all of that kind of uh, thing. Yeah, that's what I've been doing for the last probably five years since we started with the website and everything. But this has been going on for for longer than that. But yeah, that's good though. That's that's really good. And it's it's one of those things where you meet so many freaking people, so many good or good and bad. I'll say mostly good, but you have some. You get a few bad apples or falling out or whatever, which is just a part of life in general. But it's crazy how many people you meet doing stuff like this, like podcasting and vlogging and all this other. You're just like, holy shit, there's actually people. Out I mean, it's obvious, but you're, at the same time, you're just like, holy shit, there's actually other people out here that watch these kind of movies. Like, that watch these. For me, it's these these weird horror movies. It's not the big names all the time. It's just some shit you've never heard of or just something that everybody hates. And you're just like, this is a fun movie. Holy crap. But and you guys like it too, really? I, I've been mm -hmm. trying to find, I like this movie for years. <laughs> I like stuff like that, though. It's it makes yeah. it just makes it more entertaining. It makes it a little different for everybody. Yeah, and, and indie films that had have had uh, festival success, that kind of stuff. People start to um, you know to look for them all of a sudden. You know, when is there a festival yeah. in my area that's going to screen this? Because it takes a, a, a while for films to get released. Um, online and sometimes they don't get released for free, which is really what everybody's looking for. Nobody yeah. wants to to really pay for some reason, but um, that's another story. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we, we try to get um, you know to get as much buzz going for these films as possible while they're still at festivals, so that um, you know, really people from those you know areas where the where the festivals are would actually go and 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 see these movies. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in indie still. There's a lot of terrible stuff as well, but uh, oh, yeah. you know, it's a double-edged sword. It'll always be, you know, the case. But yeah, yeah. But that, <laughs> excuse me. That's with anything though. Like even with the big budget movies, there's a ton of great, but then there's a ton of stuff like, what? Wh why? Why was this made? Like, who did this? <laughs> you know, uh, what I, I mean? think. Yeah, I think with uh, with Hollywood, it's it's more terrible stuff than good stuff. Um, especially considering the budgets, you know, it's like I was, gonna, kind of I, was gonna say, I was gonna say that I was like, gonna say, um, I can see why you say that, especially because of the budgets that they get this humongous budget to put something together. And like, this is what you came up with, really? Mm -hmm. I yeah. just watched a YouTube movie and they only had six dollars in Twizzlers and they came up with a masterpiece and you had a hundred million dollars and this is the shit you put out for us to watch. <laughs> like, and the one on YouTube was free, yeah. come on. But it's it's crazy, yeah. I, I I sometimes watch you know films that come out even even on Netflix now. They still have considerable budgets, um, yeah. and I just think, ooh, if I had a fraction of that budget, what I could do with that, you know? It's just mm -hmm. amazing. 
But uh, the, yeah, terrible, terrible movies for the most part. Every now and again, there'll be a good one. Um, but it's become more and more rare. Um, I think um, because of that sort of nature of, of Netflix and the culture um, of having to produce more and more content in a hurry, they don't really wait. They don't take their, t their time with the movies. And because they come out so quickly, they are not very good. Um, a lot of them, you know, are, are so flawed um, just script-wise, you know. Yeah. Whereas in, in the past, they used to take a few years to, to work on a script to make sure that there are no loose ends, that everything fits, that everything works. And then when they shot the film, you know, editing took a while. These days, it's like they go into production, bang, before the end of the year, they have a movie, it's already out, no, nothing, you know. And then I watch it and I'm like, who okayed this? You know, how, how did this get green, uh, greenlit? It's just amazing. Yeah. We, we live in a new era, though, to where everything is everything's about getting things done faster. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, with everything, with then yeah. there, everything. And I, I, it's, it's good and bad. It's good if you can do something quick. Mm -hmm. For certain things and its quality, but it's bad again when you do something quick and it's rushed. Like you, I'll, I'll put it to you like this: you want your computer to run fast and smooth, right? You want that. You want your equipment to run fast and smooth, mm -hmm. but you don't want your content to be rushed. If that makes any sense, like Absolutely. yeah, have, like Hollywood has all the top best equipment, the budget and all that stuff, and plus, like I said, like the equipment, everything they need. Versus someone like you or I may not have the top equipment, but we have, nor do we have the budget, but it's like, okay, well, what's going to make us stand out? Okay, well, we have to make a really good story. Like, we have to have a story that grabs people's attention because the, cinemat the cinematography from what we have, like, not that the people aren't talented, but the cinematography from the equipment we have, it's only going to be so good. The sound quality, it's going to be good. You could hear it clear and all that, but it's only going to, it's not going to be up here with Hollywood. It's going to be like more like right yeah. here. That's Same close. with visuals, it's going to be right here. But the Hollywood story is going to be like right here and our story has to be has to be up here for someone to even think about watching it. And yeah. That's what I love about indies cuz I feel what what I what I would love to see here's a couple things. One, I would love to see some of these indie artists I've been following for the past few years just with their indie films and stuff really make it and like blow up. But I'd want them to keep that same hunger and that same passion and same love for creating that they had and same fresh ideas that they have. Once they did blow up and get like those budgets and all that, I wouldn't want. I'm not saying that they wouldn't, but I'm sure there'd be a few that'd be like, okay, well, Hollywood's paying me this check. I got to make this type of movie. I got to get it out quick, blah, 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 which I, I do respect. I'm not going to say I won't respect. I do respect it because you got to eat. And if it's, but at the same time, I feel like. I'd still want them to have like at least a handful of films where they took their time and put their passion into it. Not like, okay, Hollywood, do you want me to write? Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, I can fill in this, these last two sentences of my own thing. Okay, cool. But yeah. I want to be like, okay, listen, this is, this is my story. This is the budget I have. You know, I have this big budget. Let's put it up against any of your best or let's put it up against what you guys are throwing out now. It's a, it's a, it's a massive um, difference in the, um, in the process, you know, because um, indie, indie filmmakers, uh, a director would make his own movie. Generally, um, a, the director would put their own money into it, sometimes all of it. Sometimes they would find, I don't know, crowdfunding or investors to help out. Um, but this is, you know, their own blood, sweat and tears. When they go to Hollywood, it's the studio's film. It's not the director's film. Um, that is a massive difference. The director gets there, they're involved in the process, in the pre-production, in the production itself. Generally, they're not at all involved in the post-production. The post-production gets taken away and that's it. The directors rarely have final cut. Um, so, you know, in the end, it's, it's a studio's movie to, you know, to ruin, really. <laughs> they Good take point. it, they butcher it, um, they do something else with it, and then it comes out with the director's name and everybody goes, how did they go from this beautiful indie film that they made to this piece of crap that was released by the studio? Well, a lot of the time it's not their fault. Sometimes it is. Sometimes they have more power and uh, you know than we think, and they actually uh, you know get kind of corrupted, I guess, in a way by the bigger budgets and and by the bigger pay, and uh, and kind of believe their own hype, all of that sort of stuff.
uh, mm-hmm. you know, e- ego definitely comes into it. Um, but yeah, but a lot of the time it's not their fault. It's really, you know, they, they do their job on set. They direct it, you know, as, as well as they did any other film before, before that. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, if the story is good, that works. If it's not, it doesn't. But after that, you know, when they take the, you know, the, the material that was shot and, you know, it gets edited by the studio, you never know what, what's going to come out. A lot of directors get, get upset, you know, and it's like, um, you know, this whole Z- the Zack Snyder um, uh, cut that's coming out now with um, Justice League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. The directors are saying, "Look, it wasn't, it wasn't the film that we made that that was released. This was the studio. We we want you to see our cut. You know, let let's see, let let's show everyone that we really are good directors. It's it's yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a trap, really. Um, but um, but that's just the nature of of the business, you know. And if and like you said, if you want if you want to eat, you um, you got to go with the program. Um, and if you make it that far to get paid that much, that's great. There's yeah. there's a question that I keep getting all the time, and I've uh, I've actually, and, you know, I said this on many many interviews and podcasts and whatever. But people ask me, well, you know, what are you going to do if if somebody offers you ten million dollars to make a movie? And I always say I will make at least ten movies because I don't need ten million dollars to make a movie. I don't yeah. even need a million dollars to make a movie. Sometimes not even half that. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, it's just one of those things, um, and that's why you know for me personally, I just want to remain in indie. I just want to deal with those kinds of budgets. I don't want millions of dollars to make a movie. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I look at uh, at budgets, uh, you know, of, of films, and I, and I and I compare to the final product, and I just think it shouldn't have cost that much. It just it just shows that uh, there's no either no no forward thinking, there's no real planning um, in the process, so they just throw money at everything, you know, to fix things later, um, or it's just really padding some, you know, producer pockets. So, who knows? I'm not I'm not involved in in, in that side of things. In indie, we barely have enough to, um, you know, to make the film actually to shoot the film, and then. Once it's shot, we kind of have to look for money again to get it through post-production, <laughs> you know. And once that yeah. is done, we need more money to get it to festivals. It's crazy, but it's like we we do take it one step at a time because, you know, without uh, without some funding, there's nothing we can do, and generally there is no funding, so we have to really create it. So yeah. So what um. What got you into the whole indie scene? Like, what was that one? Was it like a movie or what was that one thing that really or was it something you always wanted to do as a, you know, growing up? That one thing that was just like. It's not just making movies and creating movies, but on the other end of it, like promoting. Well, I, this is a two part. So first promote or first creating. And then the second part would be like promoting for other indie artists, which I feel like I kind of have an idea because I feel like we both kind of brushed up on that just to kind of shine a light on the indie. But what really made you like, listen, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do? Um, I've, I've been a sort of a film fan, you know, ever since I can remember. Um, I knew, you know, the directors and the actors in, in all the films and, you know, always had a way of sort of analyzing film. I, I, I think for, for some reason, maybe because I started watching so young, but I, I think I have a good grasp of cinematic language. Um, so when I watch a film um, and there's subtext there, I recognize it and I have a conversation with people later and I can usually tell them what the film means and a lot of the times it's something that they didn't see. So for me, that was like a hobby, you know, uh, you know, just a f- being a fan, being a film fan, liking film. I never thought that um, going into a career in film would be smart. You know, it's it's the arts. In the arts, there's no money. So, um, you know, if you want to make some money, generally this would not be the way. So um, when I finished uh, high school and I went to university um, here in Australia, I went to business school. I did not think I was going to go into the arts as a profession. Um, so, yeah, I, I completed a business degree. And then, you know, life sort of took a direction of its own. I was working sort of in business and trying different things and, you know, owning my own business. Um, 
at some stage, um, it was somewhere around 2004, um, a, a friend of mine and a business partner, Peter Angel, um, who um, I work with on um, Engelman Distribution. He's also been... Um, uh, well, we also have a podcast um, coming coming up, coming soon. Uh, nice. Called yeah, the best and worst podcast. You you heard it first here actually. I've never talked about it before uh, in awesome. public. So, yeah, that's, that's, quick before you tell everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's coming soon. It's not a secret, but it hasn't been promoted yet. Um, I he, he and I basically thought, mm, let's try to make a movie together. You know. Mm -hmm. well, let's try. Actually, I think it started with let's try to write a script. Um, so we ended up writing a, a short script for a film called The Collector, and then we went out and made it. And we did not know anything about, uh, well, we had no real filmmaking experience. We probably knew a little bit about it, you know, how it's supposed to be done and all the rest of it, but we had zero experience. Um, and this was in the early days of uh, of the internet as well. So, but we still we we got online, we got on all kinds of forums, and uh, and got us some some crew, um, and uh, some equipment, and uh, it cost us I think a few hundred dollars, and we made this short, the collector. We sent it to only a couple of festivals, maybe a maybe a handful. It made it into two or three, and that's yeah. it. We kind of let it go. We we thought maybe we'll try to make a feature film. Which we we tried, but it didn't work because we just could not afford it in the end. Um, but yeah, after that, even though the the collector was uh, you know was a great short and everything, I sort of put it down to a hobby, and sort of kept going. And then in two thousand and nine, I moved um, back to Israel. Decided to this is sort of where I'm from, where I was born. Yep. I grew up there until I was uh, about fourteen. Um, and then from 14 to 35, I lived in Australia. At 35, I decided to go back. <laughs> just, just, to, just to try it out because I've never lived there as, as an adult. But as soon as I got there, I realized that I had a bit of free time on my hands that I wanted to use for something. Mm -hmm. And I decided film school. Okay. So, yeah. so I went back to university and uh, I completed a, a master's degree in uh, film and television. Nice. I, th I think as soon as I started, I knew this was what, what I was going to do. You know, that, that film is for me. And and when I was asked to explain it, I always said, I never, th I, I don't think I ever had a choice. I think I just kind of pushed it aside and, you know, postponed the inevitable because I have all these scripts and stories uh, running around in my head. And if I, you know, if I didn't let them out, I would probably end up in a mental institution. So mm -hmm. I was like, I have to let this out. This wants to come out. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've always known that I've been sort of more more an artist than a businessman, even though I'm pretty good at both. But um, yeah, I just I just had to go back to creating something. And uh, once I got to film school, I knew, yeah, I, I have to make this happen, and I'll, I'll I'll do as much as I can to make it happen. So that that's kind of where I am now. I, I feel like I'm. You know, probably still in the in the early stages of that process, even though it's been, you know, ten years since film school. But yeah, almost ten years since film school. I, okay. I finished film school actually in twenty fourteen. But yeah. Okay. Now, really, really quick, just because as you mentioned what I did read up on earlier, but you said you were born in Israel, mm -hmm. moved to Australia when you were fourteen, and moved back. Now, yeah. how? You don't have to get too, too deep if you don't want to, but how is the uh, cultural difference between the two? Massive. Massive. I can, I can. <laughs> Completely different. Uh, Australia is a lot more laid back. Um, you know, you can take your time here. Uh, Israel is very much uh, kind of a doggy dog kind of culture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, al it's always on the go. Um, you, you, you know, you don't have time. You don't, you don't know if you're going to see tomorrow. So... Um, that creates, you know, that, that kind of culture. Whereas in Australia, Australia is a very peaceful place, very quiet. Um, yeah, you can just take your time, sit back and relax. So yeah, it's, it's very, very different. Now, but I've, it, always, I've always had both, you know, in me. So yes. yeah. And you said you're in, back in Israel now, right? No, I'm, I'm in Australia now. Oh, you're in Australia? In Melbourne, yeah. Okay. I, 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 I came back after a decade in Israel. I came back uh, in January 2020. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, just, 
well, just before COVID hit, <laughs> I was supposed to I was supposed to fly back to um, to Israel in May of last year, May of 2020, mm -hmm. uh, to finish shooting a feature film that I'm halfway through, and then COVID hit, and th that's a, a film called um, Revelation, and that production is now on hold until I'm you know able to get back to it, which yeah. for now is not a, not an option at the moment. Oh, wow, wow, mm. wow. <laughs> Like not, not even laughing at that, but it's just like, wow, like you, that's awesome though. I mean, it, it's cool. You got mm -hmm. to, as far as just living in two different cultures has to be, I know you said one's like on the go and the other was more laid back, but still that has to be quite an experience because not everybody gets to experience something like that in life. Um, it's great experience, but it's not great, I think, psychologically for a lot of people. Okay. Um, because I think you... Um, you kind of lose a sense of identity in a way, you know, because people say to me, it's like, which is it today? Which, which are you more? Are you Israeli? Are you Australian? <laughs> and I say to them, I say, I'm Israeli um, because I'm both. Um, I will always think of myself as Israeli first. You know, that's where I come from. That's my, you know, origin story. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, I, 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 when we first moved here, I, I used to hate Australia. I, I hated being here. You know, I, I missed my friends in Israel. That's where I wanted to be. Um, but yeah, after a while, you know, you create a life for yourself in, in a place and, you know, been here 30 years. So it's like, yeah, I like it here. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's not bad at all. I, I don't feel like I'm cheating on Israel anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I did at a younger age. Today, I don't. Yeah. yeah, but I am. I am more Israeli than I am Australian, but I can I can sort of, you know, I can change my uh, sort of culture and behavior according to where I am. Okay. You know, when, when I'm in Israel and I talk to people and I tell them that I'm I'm actually from Australia, they don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but when I speak Hebrew, I have a very Israeli accent, and they just think that I'm I'm basically you know yanking their chain. But um, in in Australia, because I have the accent, people do believe that. So. Although, although it's not a quite a recognizable accent, but um, they know I'm not originally from here. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. I like that. Yeah, but I say I say to parents all the time, um, don't um, move your kids from one country to another unless they're either very young or a bit older. Um, you know, probably adults almost you know um because if they're like at that sort of early teenage um and maybe a bit earlier even yeah it creates that that sort of psychological thing where you're you just have no sense of identity you're not sure where you're coming from you're not sure where you're supposed to be who you are yeah. and all the rest of it i understand um, yeah because I, I mean not not nowhere near that extent but you even see kids like getting upset because they have to go to a different school like living in the same country but moving to a different yeah different town different city mm. which could be different but it's not like a whole country like you said like moving to a whole different country or a whole different continent that's a whole different change versus like all right look we're gonna move like i live in upstate new york so let's say we're gonna move down south mm -hmm. definitely different definitely different different pace and everything but still not to the point of a whole different freaking country like you're saying that's that's something and i get what you're saying too with that like you know if you're moving when you're about let's just say between the ages of what one in five maybe maybe before they start let's say before they start kindergarten so one in four one in five and then maybe later in the teen years but then again i feel like maybe moving early would be the best i again i have no idea because i don't have a personal experience with it as far as moving out of a country moving you know around where i live now yeah but Maybe at a younger age, yes, because you don't you don't have that experience of meeting a lot of people, have friends and all that. And then, like you're saying, that some older I don't know what the older age would be because I feel like the older you get, the more the more stubborn you get as a child. Once you learn, because you're growing as a person, you're changing another person daily every day when you're a child growing. And once you get to that teenage years, that's like the you just want to kick them, like get the fuck out, <laughs> pretty much. So it's like now you're taking that to a country this 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 attitude this bratty attitude even though they're a little happy with their friends but now they know they're moving mm. yeah it's it 
I can see where it could be tough, but then I can also see where it can be pretty cool in a sense and pretty beneficial to where you get to learn multiple cultures because you have to, you're forced to. And not only are you, you, it's not like you're, and I'll say this because you're not, it's not like you're going on vacation. Like say if I were to come to Australia to visit for a week or a month or whatever, Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring back some of that stuff with me. But but if I go there and I'm staying there for say like three years, I'm going to be more, you know, I'm going to be more like into that culture, more adept to that culture to where I'll probably bring some of that culture back to back to the states with me for let's say like a good year at least maybe longer i again i don't know but i'm just saying to where it's like things it'll just be different (laughs) it'll be different but i think it's i think it'd be a cool thing it'd be a cool it's cool make a movie it could be a cool movie well i think it's kind of almost been done in a way when people ask me to uh you know to kind of explain it better you know in a way they can understand i always say think fresh prince of bel-air um you know went from philly to sort of sort of a more i mean the way he describes it in the show it's a bit more ghetto-y kind of lifestyle you know from the ghetto of philly although philly is not quite that ghetto but still and to bel-air you know to the mansion yep 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 yep. so that's like going from the gutter to the top (laughs) yeah well in in the show it shows you as well how will smith's um character uh has trouble adjusting you know, at first he yeah. gets into fights and 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 all this uh, sort of thing. He he wants to run back to Philly, um, mm-hmm. and then he starts liking where he is and he sees the advantages and all the rest of it. And he likes the people as well. Oh yeah. Um, and it and it becomes a, a conflict. You know, uh, you don't know where you want to be, what you want to do, where you want to go when you actually have a choice. Yeah. Um, and and I say to people, yeah, it's it's Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know, times a million because. It's not just a new culture, it's a new language. Yes. You know, it's, an, it's a new country, it's a new everything. You have to learn um, a lot of things, you have to adjust, you have to adjust what you wanted out of life changes. You know, everything that's available to you is different. Um, yeah, and it's not necessarily always better. Um, today, people ask me, you know, what's better? Where would you rather be, Australia or Israel? And I say, well, obviously Australia, because that's where I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not trapped here. I can always leave. Um, but the reason that I moved back is because I realized that it's about even. It's about the same, but for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but then again, you know, my family's here. You know, my, my mother, my brothers, um, my nephew, my nieces, they're all here in Australia. So my girlfriend. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I was, I was always going to come back here, um, you know, for those reasons. In yeah. Israel, I have I have friends. I have some family, but it's not you know, exactly the same. It's not like, as far as the friends and family, I'm not, I don't want to be disrespectful when I say it, but it's not like, I'm not going to say they're not important, but you're not as close with them. I'll say as you are with the ones that you're, you know, Australia, because like you said, your girlfriend, your mother, your siblings, and then your nieces and nephews. It's, it's pretty close though. But today um, with, um, you know, with, with this technology, I can, you know, I can FaceTime, I can talk to people, I can, I can yeah. visit more often. I mean, of course, that's pre-COVID. Um, but, um, you know, now I can't fly over there to visit, but hopefully, you know, that'll change in the near future. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it, the world has become a lot smaller. Yes. Yeah, it has. So better, it's not, yeah. Which is good and bad. Good and bad, I'll say. It's, it's good because we get to do something like this. It's, I'll say the, I'm not even going to mention any things about, I'll say the bad part is you see a lot more negative nonsense that you don't want to see. You already see enough just in your own small world, let's say, but then when the world's opened up even more, Hmm. what I mean by that is, you know, the online stuff, like every time you turn around, it's like, oh my goodness, what the the hell's going on? It's just, it's just getting to us a lot faster than what it would have years and years ago where take (laughs) You know what I mean? Something would happen one day and you wouldn't hear about it for a few days at the very least, depending on the d- depending on the situation, how big the situation was. It could be big. I mean, it, it had to be a huge situation for it to travel around the world. Let's just say that. Yeah. But um, but, I wanted to ask you one more question about the Israel and Australia mm-hmm. before we get off of that. And that's how long was that flight? How long is that flight? I should say. Um just in the air, not not counting stops. Um, it's uh, twenty odd hours. Oh my goodness! Hmm. 
Yeah, usually I try I try to minimize my uh, my stops and uh, and the duration, you know, of of the stop. I usually do one stop on the way, and it's usually uh, I try for it to be within you know two to three hours. Sometimes it's a lot more. Sometimes it's very close to that. Um, but yeah, it takes me usually you know twenty six to twenty eight hours from one airport to the other. That's a little over a day. Wow. Yeah. I don't mind that. I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a filmmaker, you know. What do you do yeah. on flights? You watch films, you read books, you sleep, you eat. That's the I'm best. Just... It's like a, it's like a holiday on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> like where are you going? I'm just going on a holiday. What holiday? Mm-hmm. Plane. Oh. No, yeah. I, I like I like how you said that cuz you you really don't have much else to do but literally eat, sleep, shit on a plane. <laughs> yeah. And book. Well, Movie. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. I like that. That's cool. Because I'm over yeah, here. Yeah. Most people have trouble sleeping on a plane. That's the thing. I don't. As soon as those engines get going, I'm like a baby. I'm out. So <laughs> no problem. That's awesome, though. But damn, hmm. 20 hours or over 20 hours. That's wow. Yeah, that you got to do what you got to do, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. But um, just going back to what we were talking about before, um, I was just thinking about, you know, when when I first moved from Israel to Australia, mm-hmm. To keep in contact with family and friends, because phone calls were so expensive. Mm-hmm. This is 1988. I'm talking about. Um, so in '88 we moved here. I was 14. I'm now 46 years old. So um, I, it was really handwritten letters. So mm-hmm. I would write to friends. Friends would write to me, and I went through the whole process from you know handwriting letters to emails to phone calls getting cheaper, to talking on the computer, you know, on some kind of conversation through the computer, to what we have now, you know, where I can talk to people on the phone, you know, for free in another country. It's it's pretty crazy when I think about it, but it's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I just use WhatsApp now and talk to, you know, friends and family over there. And it's just, it makes things that much easier. You know, you, you don't even, you, you barely have the time to really miss people sometimes, you know, because you're in touch with them all the time. That's a good point. I mean, it, it's a good point. Yes, you know, they're not physically there as far as in the same city, state or country as you. But it's just like, hey, man, I want to talk to so and so. Can pull them up mm-hmm. on the chat like this and just talk and have a conversation. You could have dinner together. Technically, I mean, hey, what do you have a little dinner party True. and all True. that stuff. And I feel like people are doing it. Well, not I feel like I know people are people are doing it even more so because of COVID. And I feel after COVID happens, yes, those numbers will drop some, but I still feel like the majority of the people who started doing this are going to continue to do it just because it's convenient. At the end of the day, it's convenient. Like you, you might not always want to, even if it's someone that lives in the same city as you or same state as you, you know what I mean? Same, they live like, say they live like an hour or two hours. I really don't feel like driving an hour away or two hours away to come hang out. Let's just do it right here. We can throw a movie on if you want. We can play a game together. We can have some dinner, whatever the case may be. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I do feel like, you know, the in-person hanging out and stuff like that with friends and family is important. It is. It makes things more fun. Absolutely. But there's times where I'm just like, I, I want to do all the hanging out and stuff, but it's like, shit, when is everybody going to leave? Like, I love hosting things. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's just times like, I just want to kick my feet up and whatever but these motherfuckers are still here <laughs> versus if you're doing it right here like say if you're doing it right here even if you're doing like say if me and you were doing this right here we're doing it like an all day type of thing how some people would do i can get up go do whatever you can get up and go and do whatever and kind of leave this on and just come sit down and talk when you want to or whatever and that's fine like that's <laughs> that that's why i feel like this isn't this is not going anywhere anytime soon and even after covid not just for podcasting i'm saying just for conversations just to talk with people i feel like people are still going to do it Maybe not as much because you can see people in person, but they're still going to do it because there's there's, there's going to be the one, what I was just mentioning, like the laziness, just you don't feel like going somewhere. The weather can be an issue or people are just going to still be very precautious. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of people that have health issues or whatever the case may be. They're going to be, you know what? I'm still going to be precaut. I'll come see you guys once in a while. We could talk and hang out every day as far as this goes, but as mm. far as like physical, it'll be like once in a while. Once in a while, we'll come hang out. Nobody better be sick. Nobody better have a, a sniffle <laughs> type of deal. Yeah, no, the, the, the sort of implications that COVID's had on our future, um, some of them are really positive. 
you know, uh, uh, nowadays, if you if you have to go for a, a doctor's visit, you don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. You can just do this. You can just have FaceTime, uh, tell them what, uh, you know, what your symptoms are. They look at yeah. you and they decide from there. Because a lot of the times, that's all you do at a doctor's office, well, apart from waiting. <laughs> you know, you sit oh, there in the waiting room. I yeah. hate, oh, man, which I respect the doctor. But I'm just like, okay. They're like, okay, mm. be here at 3 o'clock. You get there at 2.50, 2.45. You fill everything out. Three o'clock comes, three o'clock goes, four o'clock comes, four o'clock goes, four thirty. Hey, we're ready to see you. Yeah. Okay. But this, I, but I, this goes, I was here. <laughs> but this goes for, for many, many types of um, of occupations. You know, some people uh, they can now have their meetings from home. It's it's a lot easier. You know, if oh. if I want to co collaborate with someone on a script, I can do it through this. Um, if I want to, um, you know. Uh, as, as a script consultant, I can do it on this, no problem. Yeah. Face, face to face, um, all kinds of things. Um, it's just, um, yeah, it, yeah it, it's, it, you can work with people in other countries, but you can also work with people in your own city and you don't have to drive this. It cuts down on, you know, cars on the road, parking, all that sort of yes, bullshit. Yeah. Really. No, um, you're absolutely yeah, right about that. Yeah, life has become a bit, a bit easier and also as far as our, uh, you know, environmental sort of issues and and the footprint and all that that we're leaving out there yeah if you want to look if you look mm -hmm. at yeah, there's there is definitely some positives about it and i mean just what you're saying as far as like not having to travel somewhere just to talk to some people like i have a couple friends where like i told you before i work from home so i'll have sometimes i'll have this pulled up damn there every day actually now i'll have this pulled up and just talk with some friends as i'm working just to help the day pass and mm -hmm. we're creating talking about ideas for each of certain things that we all do like with me with my podcast and with the gaming and streaming what my another friend similar gaming and streaming another friend photography and videography and just stuff like that just bouncing ideas off each other and the cool thing about it is like for example there's three of us now that do it more i'm hearing there's more of us but there's three of us now that have been doing it and we've been doing that we, well the two of us have been going doing it since maybe october ish on mm -hmm. and off and another guy joined us too another friend of us joined us which i just met almost two weeks ago now and every day we've been talking i'll say like yeah about every day we've been talking coming up with some ideas then a couple of days later we're actually not our, not only are we coming up with ideas to like help our individual shows and just content like that later that day or like when we're free like say if i'm done when i'm done working i'll actually go up and actually implement that stuff and i'll have them on a chat like this and we're actually doing it like for example with the restream so i'm using restream as you can see I have a green screen background. Restream doesn't have green screen as of as of right now. They have you have to go through OBS and use their virtual camera. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. Let's say last week, <laughs> and I'm just like, I got to learn this. I got to figure it out. So I watch YouTube videos, and mm -hmm. then I talk with them guys, and I have the thing pulled up, and then just setting it up. Like, oh, how does this look? How's this? Just kind of setting it up, because again, I told you the one friend he does. Um, photography and videography so he knows more about the green screen stuff and all that stuff than i do and i'm just like you know how do you do this how do you do that and you know just kind of bouncing bouncing ideas off each other and kind of helping each other out grow but what again with this whole technology thing and with this whole you know with the whole covid well even without the covid thing this is just very beneficial because they neither one of them have to physically be here and i don't have to physically be at either one of their houses to help them out to do mm -hmm. this and we could all be you know yo this is what i'm working on today blah, blah 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 we could be doing that all at the same time in our own areas as we're helping each other out but still yeah. from our own areas which i think is just a, an amazing amazing thing yeah yeah it, it it also you know saves you on on gas you know driving wherever it's just yeah i i like the option you know at the very least um a lot of people still prefer you know in some situations to have that sort of physical contact, whether it's a handshake or a hug or whatever. Um, and also, you know, looking someone directly in the eye, which is very strange, you know, doing it on a, a yeah. sort of computer screen. Um, some people still like that, and that's fine. Um, but uh, it's really, really good to have this option. You know, I mean, if, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't be able to have this this chat, you know? Exactly. No, this, yeah. this is a very great option. And, I mean, there's, a, there's some... 
I'll say the bigger podcasts, like the more, you know, with the famous people and all that, um, they're not a big fan of the whole Zoom podcasting or something like this, which I don't think they're very privy to the restream, by the way, which I think would be an amazing thing if they started doing something like that. But hey, stay, you know, don't. They like the, I, they like the in person stuff with, because it's them and their friends with some of them, you know, they're in person, which I do get. But for me, I'm like, I've always been doing it this way as far as Zoom, Skype, now restream. And whatever else comes next, that's better than restream. Whenever that happens, um, I've been doing it like that because, again, I interview people or I review movies with people from all over the place, and you can't you and I do it from my home, so you can't just have any. You don't want just anybody in your home for one. You definitely don't want that. And two, it's just it's convenient. It's convenient to do it from home. It's a hobby. You go upstairs, you record whatever wherever you record at, and you go about your business like. I do understand the whole in-person thing, like how we were talking about earlier, but for me, this is so like, this has been normal as far as the podcasting aspect of it goes. Yes. I've done a few in person with friends and family or at cons, but with the whole podcasting aspect as it goes for me, this is normal. So I'm just like, okay, now there's other ways that just made it better. Like I said, I started out with Skype and I would do the video talking, but only use the audio from it. I went on to zoom and that's, Main, that's where I started doing my videos here and there, but more so last March is where I really went. It's like, all right, I got really just got to do. And now, shit, just sometime in February, I got this like 100% use this. And I'm loving it. It's fun. It's, 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 it just gets my creative juices flowing, like in my mind, like, what else can I do to make my podcast better? both shows what else can i do to make my video game streams better when i start doing that more and how can i help other people that <clears throat> are in this same lane that enjoy that are content creators that just enjoy creating some some sort of content how can i help them some ways i know i can help is just by them seeing my growth from again from day one when i started all the way up till now and you know the end of this year let's say or the end of next year when i'm doing something even more so and people, people will see my growth. This is one reason why I do like to tell people when they create content to put it out there. Don't sit here. It doesn't have to be perfect to put it out there. I'd rather have imperfect content out there than be stuck stuck in a standstill trying to make this one thing perfect for everybody to love and see because everybody's not going to like what you put out. That's just the nature of the beast. Everybody's not going to like it. But if I can put – either way, you're going to get better. Whether you sit there and you try to be perfectionist for every single thing, you're going to get better. But I feel like you'll have a faster growth if you're just not I'm not saying rushing content out. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying you're putting something out, you're creating something, you're putting something out, you upload it <clears throat> to wherever you want to upload it. And then you go on to the next for me, it would be like the next episode. And you just each episode, there's gonna be something, maybe each few every few episodes, there's gonna be something where you take from it and you're like, okay, this is how I can make this visually better. It's like I can make this sound better. This, that, and the third, and you know. There's always there's always gonna be room for growth, and I try to tell my friends this because they're always just like, "Yeah, man, I want to do this video. Or I got this video idea, blah 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 blah." I have everything I need. Like they have the cameras and everything they need, but I'm like, "Yo, put the content." But it has to be perfect. No, it does not have to be perfect. Put the content out because some content out is better than nothing out because you're trying to make it perfect. Throw that content out, people. Not throw it out in the garbage. Throw it out to the world so people can see it. Because your content might be something that inspires somebody to where they, they might see your content. It might not look the greatest at first. Mm -hmm. And let's say 10 videos later, 20 videos later, you it looks it's like night and day. And they're just like, whoa, this guy did this. I can do this. Maybe, yeah. maybe I can do his videos or follow his tips or reach out to this person and see how they did it. And that's pretty much what I do with my content as far as like if anybody has questions about podcasting, I answer as much as I can. I'm no expert. I'll just tell you what I know because I feel like the little bit of information that I can give you is more than what I had when I started this. I was just like YouTubing stuff, which is not a bad idea at all, or Googling stuff, or just mm -hmm. trial and error, which none of that is bad, but it's cool if you can actually pick from somebody's brain that knows or kind of knows what they're like. I kind of know what I'm doing. I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I like to share that information. So Someone else can kind of know what they're talking about. And I also am someone who will take information like, okay, again, like I said, with people helping me with the green screen and all that kind of stuff. And with my mic, just certain things with the audio and visual things. Yes, I've been doing it for a few years, but there's people who have been doing stuff, let's say on a recorded basis of music. They're like, okay, here's how you can make your mic sound a little bit better or visual stuff. Here's how you can make your screen look better. Here's how you can make this, the lighting. Lighting is another thing, people. If you want to do a video podcast, lighting is important. 
anything visual you want to do, lighting is important as shit. And I'm I learned that more and more over this past year, let's say. And I know my lighting can still get better, and it will, it will. But right now, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy. I'm happy every step I took because I learned so much from this, and I'm gonna learn so much more. And hopefully, people can learn from not only my mistakes but from my my successes with this because it's. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon as far as this whole podcasting thing, people. And I mean, what I mean by that is I'm not le- I'm not stopping anytime soon. I don't want to say I'm not going anywhere anytime soon because I'm going to go somewhere with this, but I'm not leaving anytime soon because I love it way too much. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah, with the uh, with content uh, creation, it it takes, you know, sticking with it. Um, you're going to start off, you're, you're generally not going to have a lot of viewers. And it takes time and people don't realize how hard it is these days to even get, you know, a hundred views on, on anything you put out there. People think, oh, straight away, I'll get out there and it'll, I'll have thousands of views because I'll put it up on YouTube and on Facebook. It's like, yeah, no, 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 no. People don't care. People need a reason to watch your thing, you know, exactly. whatever it is. Exactly. Um, and the funny thing is I'm, I'm more a perfectionist, but I agree with what you're saying about content creation. Um, as far as putting your stuff out there, you know, mm-hmm. don't wait too long. People tend to try to perfect whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's a podcast or some kind of uh, an entertainment show or, or something. Um, and they just wait too long. And then there's more of the same and there's more competition. And then, you know, they, yeah. they didn't get their audience in time. Um, I'm more of a, of a perfectionist, but at the same time, I I do try to... Um, you know, keep control over that. It's like I, I even look at uh, at my indie review vlog, you know, the, the review show that we did, and I look at the earlier episodes, and then I look at the later episodes, and the difference is massive. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's the thing. If you wait until everything's perfect, you're not going to see that progression. But exactly. if you if you release it when it's good enough, not necessarily great. Um, you're going to see that progression, and there's something interesting about that. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool to watch it now and, and see the first episode and go. So many things we would have done differently, but um, but then you see the you know the later episodes and you go, yeah, we went a long way. So that's that's pretty cool. I agree. I agree one thousand percent. And I mean, but then again, with with film, it's different. With film, I I I am less forgiving. You know, I. I I, I, I tell filmmakers, you know, if you made a, a short or a feature, if it's not ready, don't put it out. Um, yeah. Perfect it as much as you can. Um, there's, you know, there's really no limit. You can, you can keep editing and you can keep, you know, t- uh, tweaking with a, with a film forever. It's a, it's a funny one. The, the Coen brothers, you know, they were asked uh, when they stop... Um, editing their films and they said when it's done mm-hmm. or when is it done and they said no it's the other way around when is it done and they said when we stop editing it doesn't mean that we we you know we couldn't continue to edit we could have but we get to a point where you go you know uh, how much more perfect do you want it to be yeah i can um, see that yeah so but it's I- it, it's it's a little bit that way and when the, the problem is today there are so many people out there who call themselves filmmakers just because they have a camera and they shoot something and they put it out there and then i sometimes watch it and i think okay it's it's you know su- supposedly a, a film mm-hmm. but it lacks so many things that are you know the within the basics of filmmaking that i can tell that these people who shot it and i personally would not call all of those people filmmakers i would just say there are people who try to make films um they're not ready they don't know what they're doing you can see that they don't know what they're doing you can see that it's terrible on so many, you know, filmmaking um, aspects. And you just think, why would you put it out there? And some people say, you know, I just wanted to try and whatever. And I say, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's a hobby. If people like it, people enjoy it. That's still get yeah. something out of it. But if you want to be a filmmaker, learn, you know, hone your craft, learn about it, learn how to write, uh, read other people's scripts, read, uh, you know, filmmaking books, learn. You don't have to go to film school but you do have to learn just like every other profession. You don't just decide one day, 
I have a camera, I'm a filmmaker. I'm going to shoot stuff, I'm going to put it out there, I'm going to send it to festivals, I'm a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way, and it's kind of an insult to filmmakers, I think, um, to real filmmakers. Um, I, I love the fact that the technology has um, given people this sort of opportunity, you know, to take a yeah. camera, go out there and shoot. Um, even, even when I, you know, I was telling you before about the film that, uh, that I, the first short film that I made, The Collector, when I made that film and when we wrote the script and then we went into editing and we got it out and then we put it online, I still didn't call myself a filmmaker. I was just someone who made a film. Um, that film was praised by, by, you know, by a lot of people and they, you know, people were telling me how good it is. And even then I thought, oh, so maybe I could be or should be a filmmaker, mm -hmm. but I wasn't running around calling myself a filmmaker. Um, but people do that, you know, oh, people yeah. shoot something, you know, within, within indie horror, it's even worse because in that sort of end of the pool, it lacks, you know, most of those films um, lack um, originality so badly. They're basically remaking other films, you know, I always keep telling people, if I see one more slasher film, I'm going to kill myself. Um, it's that. just, <laughs> but, so, but so many, and it's the same story. And it's all about the kills. And when you don't have um, enough experience, enough talent, enough uh, funding, your special effects are going to be pretty bad. Um, and, f you know, some people find that amusing. I personally don't. I just think it's, it's badly done, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but again, it's they don't bring anything new to the table. All these slasher films are the same. Uh, I, I have kind of lost patience, you know, with even with um, uh, classic horror films, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I watch them and a lot of people tell me, you know, that's kind of sacrilegious to say something like, um, I'm not a big fan of Evil Dead. Uh, I think the first Halloween film was not a good film. Um, all kinds of things like that. But I say, look, it's my opinion. You can you can do with it whatever you want. You can yeah. like whatever horror films or whatever style of horror you like. Um, that's fine. But don't tell me a film is good just because you like it. <laughs> you know, if you like it, you like it. That's fine. But in filmmaking terms, it's not necessarily a good film. So that's the that's the, the I think the problem. Um, with the indie world today, especially with horror, there's just so much stuff. So much of it is not good. A lot of these films, you know, that aren't good are also getting into festivals and sometimes even winning awards. And because of that, they're compared with other films that are really good. And I just don't see how that can happen. And I don't think it should happen. And I think it makes it that much harder for people who are good at what they're doing. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword, you know, it's really good because filmmakers, real filmmakers can now make films for cheaper. They don't have to get these massive um, budgets to make a film, but it also opened the door to, you know, a lot of, um, you know, hobby filmmakers who, you know, are now all of a sudden, you know, competing for the same audience. That's rough. See, I, I'm looking at it from a, a podcasting or movie reviewer's perspective, I'll say even. Mm -hmm. I love it because it's more content to watch. And like you're saying, it's it's easier for anybody to pick up even their cell phone, which has a pretty decent camera on there. It's a bigger film, which I, th I think it's a good thing in the sense of that. And like, it's, hey, I want I want to try this. I'll say for those who take it serious, not for those who, are, who just. Yeah, for those who take it, who really have a passion for it and really want to do it, I say, go ahead and go for it. Learn everything you can. Go ahead and go for it. Absolutely. Practice. Practice. Yeah. practice. And I don't want to sit here and say if you're doing it just for fun, not to do it. But I do, I do understand what you're saying at the same time. Like if, oh, I'm not it, saying I'm, not to do it. I'm not saying if you're doing it for fun, uh, just for fun, don't do it. I'm saying do it. Just don't call yourself a filmmaker. Just say it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it just for fun. This is just a fun film for me. It's a hobby. It's a play around with a camera. It's okay. not a film. But people yeah. package those as films, send I them into film festivals, and they somehow have success as as you know as short horror films or whatever yeah. and then they, they compete on the same level as some really really good films and clearly they're not in that league 
but they still get a lot of encouragement, which I think is detrimental to their pr progress. Because if a filmmaker re releases a film that, you know, excuse the language, but it's a piece of shit, and everybody tells them it's gold, they're going to continue to make pieces of shit thinking that it's gold. And no, one, and no one can argue with them that, you know, it's, it's actually a terrible film. Yeah. I see, and that's I see. kind of, yeah, that's kind of where, you know, also as a reviewer, um, you know, I get films sent to me and I tell people I don't write negative reviews, period. I only review indie films and I'm not out here to make, um, you know, to make it any harder or on any indie filmmakers, whatever level they're on. If I think that a film is not great, where I would rank it, I don't know, under a seven out of 10, I would generally go back to the filmmaker and give them a chance to pull the review. If they say not nah, write it anyway, I will write it. I will try to be generous. Um, but generally, I would not write a review that is more negative than positive. Because again, that's not what we're here for. If, I, if I'm reviewing a Hollywood film, I would trash the crap out of it if it's bad. I don't have a problem with that. You see, they had, yeah, they had a massive budget. They have no excuse. You know, they are professionals. Indie are not. We're not there yet. So, <laughs> you know, it's no. It's just funny you say because I'm like I'm in the middle. Mm. For example, like a Hollywood. I won't even say Hollywood B films, whatever the case may be. I don't have problems bashing them. Indie films, I try to be nicer. But if it's if it's terrible, and not only that, but if it's one of those ones that's horrible, there's one I have in mind, which I'll say off air. I've already bashed it online enough, and I'm sure I will in future episodes. But this isn't this isn't that. I'll say that's more for like a movie read type of thing. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> excuse me. If it's terrible, not only that, but then it's like hyped up to be all oh, this is uh, amazing film, but then you're watching it. And it's just too much. Sometimes with indie film, some no, I'm not gonna just put it on in just indie, but sometimes with movies in general, mm -hmm. they're trying to do way too much with a with a story without telling anything, without telling you anything. They're trying to do like 18 different stories, it seems, without telling you a damn thing at the end of the day. And I'm just like, what the hell is going on? And then it can visually it, so then the story's bad, it visually looks bad, and the sound is bad. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. real? Come on, man. Versus, like, I can deal with, say, good sound. I can do. I can always deal with a great story and it's visually not looking the best. I can always. Look, do, you can connect yeah. with that. I can deal with a great story and maybe not sounding the best, but I can't yeah. deal with. I can't for four, and I can't deal with all three being bad, and I can't deal with. I don't like. If the story's good, you have me. I'll at least watch. I'll check it out. I'll do what I can. I'll sit mm -hmm. through it. It's got to start there. Yeah. If I'll put it to you like this too. If I'm doing a podcast, a review on it for a podcast, mm -hmm. I have to do the whole thing, listen and watch. Which, if it's something that's terrible, it's going to make me even more angry inside. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm really, I'm going to hold this in until it's time to review this movie. And that's why I say I'm kind of in the middle because I try to be nice with indie films, but at the same time, I want to be honest mm -hmm. and. I mean, I look at it like this, like say, okay, let's, let's say there's a podcast that reviewed other podcasts, right? That reviewed podcasts or podcast episodes. And they review, they say they reviewed any of mine and didn't like them. That's your mm -hmm. opinion. That's your Absolutely. opinion. No, hard, no hard feelings from me, no hard feelings. And when I review people's films, when I review movies in general, besides Nicolas Cage, it's not personal. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really, it's just how I feel about the film. And I could sit yeah. here and watch the film and say it's wasting my time, blah, 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 blah. Why did you make this? But and talk shit about it. Yes, because it's fun and funny, but it's yeah. not you know, towards that person or towards those people in that film. Again, unless it's Nicolas Cage. And that's just how I do it. And I, I do understand, I do respect what you're saying too. Like you when you do your when you do your reviews, you won't you try not to write up a negative review. Like, listen, you might want to pull this on indie. On indie, on indie, yeah, that's what I mean. On indie, you try to make it as positive as possible, which I do get that because it's like you want to not only give this person this confidence, but you want indie in general. Well, you want indie in general to get that light it deserves. And I, I want the same thing for indie, but I'm also like, I'm reviewing these movies 100. percent Like for my show now, we for both shows we have a wheel. We spin the wheel. Whatever movie lands on is what we pick. Is what we watch. And good, bad, whatever. There's going to be some movies on that we all hate, and we're going to be honest about it. Like, I, I don't want to review a movie and lie 
just because yeah, no, I, I would never lie. No, 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 no. I'm not saying yeah. you are. I'm, you. I'm just, yeah, just I'm yeah. just me. And then like, as far as uh, yeah, I just want to give people my honest because again, especially with horror movies, for some strange reason, I'm guilty of this. You can give a movie a bad review and hate the movie, and there's gonna be some people that be like, I gotta go fucking watch that like right now. I gotta see if this movie is really that bad. True. Versus. I, and this is again me speaking for myself. Like when I see a bad review of a movie, oh, this movie is so bad. I, I feel like I have to go versus when someone's like, "Yo, this is the best movie I've ever seen," because you've been disappointed so many times with that line. This is the best movie, or we've all seen it. It's damn near the same freak. I feel like it's the same people sitting in the same theater. You know, they have like the the um the night vision light on, and people mm-hmm. are in there watching a horror movie, and all you see is their reactions. You don't really hear the movie. You see the reactions. This is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. Da 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 da. It's like I feel like it's the same people in the same room, and it's about different horror movies. And you go and watch them, and you're like, what, what was this? And it gets to the point where, like, when you see that, you're like, you know what? I'm not going to watch this movie. And you watch a movie three, four years down the road, and you're like, that was a good fucking movie. I should have watched it when it first came out. <laughs> but because of that hype behind it, like, you're, it's not that it's always a bad movie, but your expectations, again, will do this. It's up here. It's, it's up here. It's like, if it doesn't live up to this, the movie sucked, no matter what. And when, again, with the bad movies, you're, you're actually, you have zero expectations. I try to go into every single movie with zero expectations, but it's, when someone tells you it's bad, you're like, all right, I already know it's going to suck. I already know it's going to be bad. I know what I'm getting in for. But then when you watch it, you're like, this movie's not half as bad as what they were talking about. Hmm. And you're not as upset. Maybe that's what it is about the bad movies, the bad horror movies, because at the very least, it's like, okay, well, I was warned that this was bad. So, boom. No, but when, no, when you're not told, for me. <laughs> oh, see, oh. I, I don't listen to people's opinions about movies before I watch them. I will only talk about a movie with people after I've seen it. Um, but um, I also don't watch trailers or anything like that. I try not to know like, yeah. as much as possible about a movie as, as I can. I just don't want to know what the story is and what, you know, what it looks like and all the rest yeah. of it. I want to be surprised at least a little bit because these days, it's trip. getting harder and harder to be surprised. You know, the more yeah. you know about film, the more you can predict what's going to happen in a film. And for me, you know, 90% of movies are a bit of a waste of time because I know what's going to happen, especially if I watch a trailer. I'm like, I've already seen the movie. I don't need to see it. That, um, my goodness. That, that is one yeah. thing that pisses me off, man. It, trailers, when they show, like, I've watched... Recently, I haven't been watching as many. I did watch the Mortal Kombat trailer because I felt like I had to. But for the most part, I don't really watch trailers. Too, too much because they give away too much like you're saying like there's some shows that give and there's there's the ones that give away all the best parts of the movie you go and watch the movie you're like okay you watch the trailer like oh wow this movie's gonna be freaking amazing and then you watch the movie and like they fucking showed the whole movie in the trailer the rest of this movie sucks like everything else is just yeah it's boring but I don't know. Like I said, here I'll say this: here and there, I will watch them. For the most part, I don't. But here and there, I will. And I may or may not start. Actually, I'm going to start watching them more because I'm going to start doing, um, which I used to do a, a little while ago. But me and some friends are going to start doing some um, trailer reaction videos, hmm. so to speak. And then we'll, on top of that, what I'm going to do is probably mix it in with both shows. Maybe is. Uh, Watch the trailer. So, for example, actually, I, th- I think I am going to start doing it. So, so, for example, Tuesday night, tomorrow, my my next show, the live show, I'm going to – we're doing Leprechaun 4, Leprechaun in Space. I'm excited for it. Never seen it, but I love cheesy, corny, stupid horror like that. I've been wanting to see it for years because I've just been seeing it on my news feed. And every every time I see it, I'm like, I got to watch this movie. And now I literally have to watch it because it's with the wheel pick. So, what I think I'm going to start implementing in the show is when we spin the wheel again tomorrow, let's say. Go to YouTube, and I don't know the whole copyright thing. I know you can watch YouTube videos. So what I would do is mute it, share the screen, watch the trailer for the next film, just to see if it lives, just just to see the trailer. Not to hear it, but just to see it. And again, I'm only muting it because I don't know the whole... I don't know if YouTube's going to be like, all right, we're going to smack you on the hand. You got to take this down. Because, again, mm-hmm. it's going to be a live feed, and it's going to be on YouTube and all that. So, you know, just to see how the trailer is, and then go ahead and watch the movie. Maybe even watch the trailer with sound, you know, after the episode or whatever. You can watch it with sound, just have headphones on. So that you guys can hear it, right? So, yeah, you get to hear it, and then you can re- react to it fully. But, um, yeah, but the your audience can't hear it, which is really what you want because, you know, copyright issues and all that. Yeah, that's why I just – I don't mind doing it on mute either, though. And it, it just it, 
and it's because not the same the- though. You're not you're not getting the full effect because sometimes, especially like you're talking about the cheesy, corny ones, uh, the soundtrack has a lot to do with it. <laughs> the actors' intonation and you know the way they they deliver their lines it's just ridiculous so very, you know very, it helps I have to, well I, i'll have to look into it a little bit more because i want it to be so for example say me and you're reviewing a movie tomorrow mm-hmm. me and you hear it but the rest of them can't i don't know how to do that yet if i can that's why i said i would want to do it to where no because i have headphones right here behind yeah, me but that's what i'm saying you can have headphones when you're watching it um, and then you respond the way you respond because you're not really in a conversation with anyone. So that's okay. That works. I see what you're saying. I've, Especially I've, with trailers. I've, full movies is maybe a bit harder, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Trailers. Well, the full, actually, this might be bene- This may or may not be beneficial to you or anybody that works with you. What, another thing we want to start doing is if it's their own film or they 100% own it and say it's out on YouTube, so to speak, so I can play it. Mm-hmm. We want to do like a um, a commentary review, but it, I say for a, a film that's like a half hour, of like, you know, for people's indie shorts, half hour, mm-hmm. 45 minutes max, but like a half hour or shorter, but do it live, mm-hmm. like a live type of review. Have some, Of course, have fun with it and all that stuff too, but kind of, and then obviously in the description, put like, hey, this is where you can find the, this is where you can find the film without us talking over this, that, and the third, but just to... Have some fun with it. Maybe even have the artist, someone from the film, that's be a part of the review with us or whatever. Which we're, you know, we're still talking about it behind the scenes. But it's something we actually want to do on the. Um, if you could see on the bottom corner over here, uh, wherever my background, the Z Network. Yeah, I can see it. That uh, that's a network for creators by creators. I'm one of the. I'm the founder of it. One of the founders, and basically, it would be on that channel, on that YouTube channel. Um. Mm-hmm. Which I'd still, I mean, and plus on the Facebook channels, like the Z Network Facebook channel, like the horror channels and all that, but it'd be, it would be on the YouTube channel and basically just us, whoever is a part of the Z Network reviewing horror shorts or whatever type of short that's in there. So even have to be horror, honestly, just 30 minutes or less. And, but we want to, again, we want to do it as like a live review so people can watch and listen and hear everything. But we obviously, like I said, we want to get their permission before we do it. So it's not like, hey, take this video down because you did my movie. You reviewed my movie with my movie playing and my movie, you know, audio and visually playing. And so far, I know we got like one or two people that are cool with it so far. But we're, you so, know. Are you actually showing the movie at the same time to your audience or is it just you yes. watching the movie? Oh, oh you are showing it. We haven't started it yet. It's going to be all of it, like showing and watching. Hmm. But that, that's yeah. why I said we want that, that becomes Yeah, that becomes problematic for some people, especially ones who. Um, uh, count on their films either, you know, if they're on some sort of a paying site in some way, well, whether, no, whether, whether, whether it's VOD or whether they're getting paid in the, and the site is free. Um, and also, um, even if they're just counting on views wherever the, the film is uh, based, they yeah, know that, that if people will watch your show and they'll see it there, they won't go to see it anywhere else. So. No, that's what, that's what I was saying. We would we, we talked to we talked to a couple people so far. Like I have um shout out to Kyle, but I have a like a, a friend that's a publicist, he's from Canada that I met through podcasting who works with it. Some indie, you know, just helps him get onto podcasts and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he he was the one who had conversations with one indie short that we did review, kind of discussed on an earlier episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, they were cool with it. They were 100, and it's on like their their thing is uh, on YouTube, and they were 100 cool with it. Like once he explained what we were going to be doing, and if they want to be a part of the episode as well, they were. So I wouldn't just go out and do like say if you had a yeah, a yeah, show, yeah of, course, of course. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just go out and grab someone. I would ask their permission and yeah, what, what everything is, which I'm recording this now, people, so you guys actually can hear the idea, versus me just going and grabbing something. Like, okay, let's review the. It's it's different than me like reviewing Leprechaun Four and showing that to everybody and doing that. That I know will get pulled down. Versus again, say you're like, hey, Aaron, I have a I have a short film that I would like you guys to do that with. Hmm. You have my permission. Whatever the case, whatever we have to do, whatever the part is, it's on YouTube. I don't mind you guys playing it. This, that, and the third. Boom. But well, again, I I have um, I have a couple of films, uh, a couple of short films that I wouldn't have minded, but not if you show it. Like um, for you to react to it is fine. Okay, but actually showing it is a problem, especially because they're they're in distribution. So, understand. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. 
but I, that doesn't that, that that doesn't mean I would not review indie films at all. That's just that's just a diff, That's just another segment. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. No, I get that completely. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I know about the you know reaction videos of uh, you know reaction video shows now. You know, it's become a yeah. thing. Uh, whether it is to music clips, to to trailers, to movies, to all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Oh, it uh, is. It's fun. Yeah, I've watched a few of those music ones on YouTube. They're very entertaining. But yeah. they're, they're, they are. They're funny and they're they're fun to do. They definitely are. But yeah, no, there's a, you know, um, go, going back to what we talked about before with reviews of, you know, indie and otherwise, um, it, it works in the same way as to, as to what you're saying here. It's like there is a, ma- a, a major distinction, you know, between indie and... You know, not even Hollywood, even just B-grade films, you know, are still mm-hmm. very, very well budgeted. And that's what I meant when I said, you know, I review indie differently because of the level level of difficulty is higher. You don't have money. You have to create it somehow. And uh, and for you with this thing, you know, it's like obviously some indie films, you'll just, the people will just give you the permission and say, yeah, you know, do, do your worst. We'll, we'll watch it. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you're taking any budgeted film, you know, that... You're going to have some copyright issues. Um, the yeah, when no, the that, re- that that I know 100. percent That's why that's why I yeah. said indie films and not only indie films, but I want to actually get the artist permission and oh, for sure. not not only get the permission, but also hopefully get them on the episode with us because that yeah. right there, it's like okay, they said yes and they're here with us because I, I did. I did a review my myself and my co-host James did a review a couple of weeks ago on a movie called Dry Blood. Oh yeah, that rings a bell. I think I know the film. Yep. Good I film. Seen it, film. Yeah. And we had we had actually we didn't do it like with the whole how I'm describing it. We did it how we normally you know, we watched it on our own and then you know came together to review it. But we reviewed it with a guy, his name is Kelton Jones. That's and, right. Yep. In the film. And mm-hmm. it was like I would like to do that even like review movies with people that are actually in the films because you get a different perspective once you hear like, okay, well. For this scene, we were going for da 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 da, or you know, for that scene, this is what we had in mind. This that you know, just certain things. So it kind of makes you think of things a little bit different. Yeah, and, and you have your um, you know, like a Q and A right there. You can ask them all the questions exactly. about what you thought was good, what you thought was bad, why was it bad, exactly. and and also why was it that good? Um, you know, they can give you some answers as to as to how these things were were done. You know, exactly took the words right out of my mouth. Like that's exactly what we got from. And it was fun time too. Like it was such a great time. It was like, I have fun doing this anyway, either way, but it it was a fun time and it was different. So I'm like, okay, the boom, that's another idea. I want to start doing more episodes like that to where if we're reviewing a, an indie film or whatever the case may be, like any films, if one of the actors or actresses wanted to be on the episode with us. I'd be happy to do that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Because uh, for, for me personally, um, when it comes to reviews or even just feedback, you know, just people watching, uh, people who don't like my films, I'm actually interested in hearing their opinion just as much as I am from people who like them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, whether I agree with them or not, I mean, I released a film, so I'm more likely going to disagree with someone who didn't like it. But I find myself sometimes saying, oh, yeah, I see a point. You know, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a taste thing. Or yes, yes, uh, technically that part of the film wasn't as good as it should have been. And if that's mm-hmm. something that, you know, you're very picky with, I can understand your opinion. You know, I, I don't take it personally. And, um, you know, that's another thing with, you know, with indie and, uh, you know, starting in filmmaking, you have to have a thick skin. You know, yeah. if you're going to take offense and take everything personally b- because people don't like, you know, what you've done, you then can. you shouldn't be in it from the get-go because you're not going to be able to handle it later on. You need to develop yeah. that thick skin, otherwise you'll never survive. Um, you know, you, you, you're going you're gonna to take you're going to take praise too far, and you're going to take negative feedback too far, yeah. and I'm- that's just going to ruin it. Yeah. I'll even go to the next step and just say, not even just with indie films, but just with creating, being a creator, creating in general, you're going to have good and bad feedback. Absolutely. You, you have to learn how to honestly just figure out what's, yes, you could have good and bad, but you got to figure out what's uh, useful feedback for you. Meaning the positive stuff is always great. You always want to see that. Yes. But the negative stuff, if it's like, okay, 
you know, I didn't like this because boom, boom, boom. Maybe you could do this a little different versus yeah. fuck you. This sucked, which I mean, I say that about movies sometimes because it's just. Yeah, but, that, but that's no, you know, neither a, a, a review, it's you know, not, nor, nor feedback. This is just the yeah. you feel pissed me off. <laughs> but 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 what but what I'll say with that is I will like during an episode, I'll say it because it's funny. Like, you mm. know, fuck you. I wasted my time. Yeah, watching. Yeah. But I, but I will have more to say about that but i'm saying like when people people leave a comment like i hated this this is stupid i don't like you it's like okay that's 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 all fine and dandy but what part of it didn't you like that's that's yeah. cool that's yeah, cool. i reserve i reserve those comments to uh horror classics that i didn't like <laughs> i reserve it to anything i don't like i mean it's just <laughs> no, against... I, I always i always go on to explain um you know why i think what i think about a film um yeah have to you have especially doing what you and i do i mean hmm. you know with your site and then with me with the podcast you have to you don't have to go like in a crazy crazy depth but just like look whatever reason you're connecting with the film and kind of go from there and make it entertaining be yourself but make it entertaining and some people don't seem i don't think people understand that part of it as far as being i'll say as far as the podcasting part of being yourself and make it entertaining like the personality you see with me Mm-hmm. Is what you're gonna get even when the cameras are off do i tone it down a little bit it depends on where i'm at it's just like anything else like you act a certain way depending on where you're at i'm not gonna be jumping up and down saying fuck you nicholas cage if i'm out at a nice restaurant with my wife but if i'm reviewing a movie and he's in it hey that's gonna slip <laughs> you, hey, you know it's like, your show you can say whatever you want exactly exactly that's that's true too yeah but you got no, you know it's become a bit of a running joke i think with some uh, horror uh, fans or friends of mine some horror filmmakers who are friends of mine about my dislike of of you know some horror classics some horror staples um you know they will always tease me about it but i stand by it um I, you know i think some of those films are uh, massively overrated as films you know you can call them guilty pleasures you can call them whatever you want that's fine if you're saying I enjoyed it, but don't tell me it's a good film. <laughs> if you tell me it's a good film, I will argue with you to death that it isn't because it isn't, um, you know, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And there are plenty, especially in, you know, classic horror, um, because a lot of it is, um, you know, that kind of B grade that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of people rate, you know, Halloween or, you know, Evil Dead as their favorite horror film of, of all time, you know? And then they go on to say, it's the best horror film of all time. And I say, hang on a second. There's major difference between the two things. There you is. Know, your favorite, I can understand. The best, I can't understand how you can even say that. I my, my, my favorite film of all time is not a film I think is necessarily the best film of all time, you know? I- I'll give you an example of that. I feel um, Friday the 13th is my favorite slash is my favorite slasher franchise. Part seven is my favorite one of them all. Mm-hmm. Not the best horror movie. Be cool though on part seven being your favorite. But um, it's a long way from first. <laughs> Usually a lot of people prefer the original to any sequel. I know. Not me though. You know what it is? I just the look of it. Kane Hodder is my favorite Jason for one, but the look of it, everything like that. But but no, what I was getting at is like um jaws is probably a better film than friday the 13th yeah but i would throw friday the 13th on way quicker than i throw it on jaws any and i don't get me wrong i love the movie jaws but i'll throw mm-hmm. friday the 13th on because it's more entertaining for myself it's not a better movie like you're saying it's not a better mm-hmm. film it's not a better movie but it's, i love it it's to me it's just a fun film same with halloween i throw halloween on before i throw jaws on but at the same time i know jaws is a better film like i yeah. I can admit that. I have no problem admitting that. Like a lot of my, a lot of films that I do that I grow up loving, especially in the horror mm. realm, <laughs> they're not always the greatest, but they entertain me. So it's just yeah. like I'm cool with that. So I, I, I understand. Like I had to think about what he, I'm like. Wait a minute, what the hell is he talking? I'm like, okay, wait a minute, think about it, Aaron. Like I get exactly what he's saying, and I'm sure you also look at films probably a little bit different than I do. You being a film creator. Mm-hmm. And me, you know, watching them as a fan and now reviewing them as a fan. But still, it's like, I know, I can tell what's, to an extent, I can tell what's a good film and what's not a good film. It's just like, okay, this this is entertaining. I like it. It doesn't necessarily make it a good or a great movie. And then there's films that are great films 
but to me, it's, I'm just like, this was, this was one of the worst things. This is the most boring thing I've ever... It looks great and all that, but it, it sucks. It turns yeah. the bullshit off. Especially, and, especially with horror fans, you know. There's, there's today, there's a... Um, you know, within, within the horror fan camp, there's a lot of people who don't like the sort of new horror where, um, you know, it's more psychological horror. For me personally, I love it. You know, I think it's much better than any you know, jump scare, gore, horror, whatever you want to call it, because there's so much more emphasis on story. Yeah. And being, you know, a, a script writer and, and director, a writer-director, I have to like story more than, you know, effects, more yeah. than gimmicks. And I think a lot of these things are gimmicks in horror films. You know, jump scare is a gimmick. If it, if it doesn't need to be there, it shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way even horror fans today um, describe films, it's like, um, oh, I, I, I love that horror film. Why? It has the best kills. Okay, the best kills are fine. It's entertaining, whatever. It doesn't make a film good, you know? You, I you, you can't, and, and now I'm seeing, you know, crowdfunding campaigns and upcoming films and all that, and all they describe is we're going to have the best kills. The kills are this, this, and that. And I'm like, okay, I, I already know. I don't want to watch that movie. And I'm seeing, it, and that's for me and you different. Cause I'm like, holy shit, there's gonna be some. I want to see the that next crazy thing. But that's the thing I love about. It's not that's filmmaking. Me, about, you know? That's the thing I love about movies, though, and that's the thing I love about reviewing them. Is you get. It's like um, it's like food. You get different variations, different flavors of food. You can get mm -hmm. a master chef. You can like say you you're the best cook in your family, and then you can have a master chef come and cook. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, it might be one of those things where it's your ego. It's a, little bit, it's a little bit like that. Not, not necessarily ego, but more to do with, I don't know, a certain expertise. You know, if a chef um, tries your favorite food, they might spit it out. Yeah. Or at least my favorite food. I know it. I have a very simple palate when it comes to food. Um, you know, I prefer, you know, burger and fries to some kind of glamorous meal. Um, I'm with you. It's, it's still. Yeah. But but you know some some kind of chef would would kind of taste it and go this is crap. What is this you know, shit? Oh, well, it's still my crap. <laughs> it's yeah, what and, I. Like. And the reason that's how it can go with movies because it's like you know you put you you, you could tell somebody which I'm not asking because I don't know my favorite movie so I'm not even gonna ask you that. Let's just say Friday Thirty Part Seven is my favorite. I can show you that and you're like Aaron, what the hell is this? Versus, I, I, I know my favorite movie. I don't know my favorite horror movie. Okay, well, what's your favorite movie? The Magnificent Seven, 1960. It's a western, it. a western, you know, not even, a, you know. A, yeah. But it's just, it is. It's my favorite movie. It's the movie that had the most, whoops, the most, I keep hitting him. The what? most I, impact on me. You know, it's uh, it's one of those films yeah. that kind of influenced me that, that I remember more than other films that I've watched more than any other films. I understand. Um, when it comes to horror, I don't know what my favorite horror film is, but I know which film I think is potentially the best horror film of all time, in my opinion. What's that? John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, great choice. That's uh, an I, 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 think, I think it's the most sort of influential. It's the one that sort of put it all together um, as far as, you know, the special effects at the time uh, yeah. were great. Um, the, you know, the soundtrack. And, and, and I'm in the same conversation. I can tell you that I think Halloween, which is also John Carpenter, is not a good film. But he also made what I consider to be, you know, the best horror film of all time. So it is a bad story, you know. I, I find that uh, the Mike Myers uh, character, Michael Myers, is um, not Mike Myers. That would be a different person. Um, Michael Myers is. Um, is cool, but very badly written. I can see why you say that. It's like a movie with no reason. You know, I watched the whole movie. He's walking places and catching up to people. He's uh, uh, walking into uh, houses and just stabbing people that he has no reason to stab. And at the same time, they show you that that character works on motivation. You know, he kills for a reason, and then he doesn't. And it's like, I don't know, it's it's just so inconsistent. There's no real reason for Michael Myers being the way he is. There's mm -hmm. just, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. And if a film is inconsistent to me, it's not good. It's badly written. 
And then I go and I watch the thing and I go, oh my God, it is so good. How can this possibly be the same filmmaker? The, yeah. the, the best thing about Halloween is the amazing soundtrack. And that's also John Carpenter. So I like Carpenter. I think he's he's um, very talented. He's got some some skills in, in many areas, you know, mm -hmm. from directing to music. But I don't like Halloween. Nothing wrong with that, though. And I like Michael Myers. I, I think the character is cool. There's something about it that, that works, but not the way it's written. Yeah, you know? I, I get that, though. But And again, that, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's, that's one thing I love about movies and the one thing I love about podcasts in general is you get everybody's gonna have a even if you both like or love a film, you're still gonna have different opinions and different ways of describing that film. Yeah. When when it comes to when it comes to favorites, I think there's more discussion and there's yeah. gonna be more difference of opinion because it is opinion. When it comes to best, um, there's still opinion in there, but it's less about that. You you know, you need to actually explain things. Um, to do with filmmaking, you know, technicalities to do with, um, you know, um, s actual script writing. And, mm -hmm. and you, you actually have to explain why you don't like this. You, you can't just say, I, I didn't like it. it. It's subjective. It's like, no, best is not subjective in that, in that regard. You still need mm -hmm. to have a reasoning behind it. It still is, you know, in some way subjective, but it can't just be that. Yeah, you, you you really need to to follow through and, and explain why you think it's that good or bad, whether you liked it or not. That's just to do with your personality and what you like and all the rest of it. Um, you know, I, I've seen many many films that that um, that I think are borderline terrible films, but I enjoy them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Now, with that being said, before we do wrap up, I have one one last question for you. What is that thing next to you? Yes. It's a mask. <laughs> oh, or what is it from? I should, I'm, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm actually still trying to work it out. Um, I know I know it. I just can't remember where from. I, I have a feeling it's from a, um, a 70s uh, European horror film, um, but I can't remember. I've actually put it out on a couple of podcasts and, and said, if anybody knows, please let me know. Um, but um, the reason I have it actually has nothing to do with horror. Um, there's a, a scene in an actual um, comedy web series that I uh, wrote and directed, um, and I needed um, basically a stand-in for one of the actor's heads. And this dude here has the same hair as my, my character. So this is how he appears in my film. In, in my series and now in the film. Basically this. This is why I got it. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. So, yeah, nothing to do with horror, but I think it does come from horror. And, um, yeah, I've kept it as a sort of one of those, you know, uh, mementos, you know, props from That's films, awesome. especially since uh, the actor has passed away. Um, it's kind of one of my, my things. I kind of keep him around. No, that's that's cool. That's really cool. I'm glad I asked that question now. That's that's really cool and funny too because you're just like I just got it for the hair, like literally just for something. Yeah, yeah, just just for the hair, and it worked so perfectly. And um, and the thing is, uh, the web series um, over uh, a little bit before COVID and over COVID, we've sort of re-edited and made it into a feature film, which is going to be coming out soon. Awesome. Yeah, it's called the Bruce Springsteens. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Like, so well, quickly, it's the Bruce Springsteens, but yeah, the Bruised Springs Teens. Yeah. The Bruce Springsteens. It's a wacky, wacky comedy, you know, nothing to do with horror. Well, there's there's a couple of horror bits in there, actually, but yeah. Nice. It just, nice. It, just uh, it mainly spoofs um, uh, mainstream cinema. Nothing wrong uh, with that. My camera dropped. Uh-oh. I don't know if you can see it on your end, but I can't see it on mine. Let me just try I, to fix it. I can. It looks frozen, but I mean. Oh, okay. So it hasn't could, dropped. Down. We could wrap up anyway if you want to. Yeah, yeah, we're almost there anyway. You. Sorry? I said if you want to, you know, do your plugs, plug your show, plug plug your plug where people can find you if you want to. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, people can find me um, on Facebook um, just under my name, Itai Guberman. They can find me on Twitter. 
um, at itiger32. Um, but yeah, basically, you can get in touch with me through myindieproductions.com. Um, there's an email there um, that, you know, just to, to contact us or whatever. Um, and again, we also have uh, my Indie Productions page and group on uh, Facebook that you can join. Aside oh. for that, you know, all the projects are, you know, on the website. Some of them have Facebook pages and all of that. We're, we're everywhere, pretty much. Nice, nice. And then I'll just say really quick, uh, when you get a chance, just shoot me your um, shoot me your links and stuff. And then when this when this episode is live, yeah. I'll yeah. and stuff and all the other DSPs, I'll you know put it down below. But I want to thank you for coming on. Had awesome. a great time. Yeah, it's been Had a awesome. really great time. Next <laughs> time we do this, we will have zero technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, no, we had a we had a terrible start and, and nearly an hour's delay. And it held out until, you know, the last few minutes when the camera dropped out again. <laughs> yes. But um, again, man, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been, a, it's been a blast. For everybody that is going to be listening and watching, go check them out. Again, the links will be down below. And as far as, you know, Horrors are Sturdy, I have a Facebook group, Facebook page. Like and join both. I have Horror Research 30 on YouTube. Go give that a like. The Z Network on YouTube, give that a like. The Z Network on Facebook, give that a like. Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. It's a lot to like. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, oh, Twitch. For the Z Network and for Horror Research 30, I'll give you the Z Network one first. It's the underscore Z underscore network. For horror star sturdy, it's horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy on Twitch, and I'm both of those channels for um oh another cha another place to like is popcorn and pints on Facebook. I'll give that a like and go follow popcorn pints. Again, it's popcorn pints all one word at popcorn pints on YouTube or sorry on uh, Twitter, but um yeah popcorn and pints will be live on the Z network. Popcorn and Pints will also be live on the Popcorn and Pints page. And all that fun stuff. Just give the Z Network a like and everybody on there. Again, thank you guys for listening and guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmares.